Well, welcome back to the Big Board. We're going to try and wrap up the readings of the uh, initial Salerno landings <clears throat> and sort of get that uh, sort of wrapped up and done. I've finished the campaign and uh, had a good time with that. So what I want to do is just kind of jump straight in and, and uh, read through to the point where things stabilized for the allies and we'll, we'll kind of go from there. All right. So bear with me if I've, uh, if I cover uh, a couple of things that have already been covered because <clears throat> I didn't accurately mark the page uh, where I left off of. I think I stopped around 223, <coughs> excuse me, which was just at the point where Germans were launching another counterattack and uh, this time it was uh, it's coming out of Eboli and down this primary this road here that's uh, listed as a secondary road here. I think this is Highway 18. I'm not certain, but it certainly parallels the Sele River, and so I think that is fairly accurate. So this uh, this counterattack, uh, there's a, a tobacco factory somewhere around this area here, or, and it was sort of a key set of buildings and was fought over pretty aggressively in the full fury of the, and we're reading now, full fury of the German attack fell <clears throat> at this area at 3.30 uh, p.m. A spearhead of 15 panzers clanked southwest down the Eboli Road, uh, followed by a shrieking battalion of grenadiers uh, firing off smoke and flares to make them look like they had a bigger force. And like a battering ram, the assault uh, stove in to one flank and then the other of the 157th Infantry's 1st Battalion, part of Middleton's 45th. From the far bank, tank fire screamed uh, through the Yank uh, command post. The battalion soon broke, uh, pelting west down the river for nearly two miles uh, to, uh, toward Highway 18 with a loss of more than 500 men. I'm going to skip forward a little bit, but then it says on uh, page two, uh, 224, the wolf was in the fold. Traces were going through my pack, a soldier later wrote to his father. Uh, then he quotes, uh, and to quote, my nose was all scratched from trying to hug the ground, uh, and, end quote. After the, across the river, a single battalion uh, from the 36th Division, the second of the 143rd, <clears throat> had been plopped after midnight between the cellar and the Kalor River. So probably in somewhere in this area here just beyond the hamlet oh there we go the hamlet of Persano there we go so somewhere around here <coughs> Germans from the uh, uh, Tabacaficio uh, looped behind the unit's left flank while the panzers struck from the right and head on machine gun machine gunning GIs in slit trenches along the dirt track uh Of the 824 men, 334 survived to fight another day. Half the battalion was captured, including the commander. Some men dropped their weapons on the pretext that the barrels had, been come to, had become too hot to handle. Poor coordination between 45th and 36th Div uh, resulted in gunners from one firing into the backs of soldiers from the other. Fantastic, jeez. Uh, <clears throat> Chaos, right? All uh, all afternoon, panzers hunted GI, GI like game birds in the dense undergrowth. A major who escaped across the Kalor summarized his uh, report in five words. It was hell up there, end quote. Right. Uh, the enemy is on the run, according to the German, uh, the German uh, reports. Only a charred, demolished bridge across the Kalor five miles from the beach momentarily stalled Vykov's uh, drive to uh, paste him in the sea. Paste him's down here. Uh, let's see. Then on the southwest uh, bank of the Kalor, hard by the junction with the cellar, so right here, two field artillery battalions from the 45th Division, the 158th and the 189th, shouldered two dozen guns into the brambles and at 6.30 p.m. let volley, let fly volley after stabbing volley, point blank across the muddy stream. Drivers, bandsmen and cooks crawled along the bank and the crack of rifle fire was soon soon punctuated by the roar of 105mm howitzers and the pump of white phosphorus mortar shells uh, springing from their tubes. <clears throat> Smoke billowed in the bottoms, sh uh, swallowing the molten glare of flares floating on their tiny parachutes and howitzer shells splintered trees on the far bank, clear-cutting woods with steel and flame. 
Some guns fired 19 rounds a minute, triple the howitzer's supposed maximum rate of fire, in a blur of yanked lanyards and ejected brass. Stripped of the waist and black with grit, soldiers staggered from dump, from dump to gun with high explosive shells on each shoulder, and uh, sheets of flame bridged the calore, hour after hour after hour. Three miles down the highway, uh, Highway 18, grim dispatches flooded into the 6th Corps uh, tobacco barn. An enemy column a mile long was moving south from Iboli, excuse me, that's here, uh, towards Pisano to exploit the gash in the American lines. Several, uh, several battalions had been ravaged, if not obliterated, and German shells had destroyed 40,000 gallons of fuel <clears throat> and thwarted efforts to reopen the Salerno port. Uh, runway construction work had been impaired this afternoon by the desertion of the terrified Italian laborers. Let's see. Uh, I'm probably going to skip some of this. Here we go. Clark had spent the day in Grunthen's, uh, Grunthen's uh, trailer hearing the same bleak reports. The beachhead, he concluded, had deteriorated from precarious to extremely critical. Not until this morning had Alexander issued any uh, unambiguous not until this morning had Alexander, the overall commander, issued an unambiguous hurry-up order to the Eighth Army, which is supposed to be coming from the from the south, uh, from uh, to the right of the screen here. Let me see if I can. Uh, so from this direction, you can see those red red uh, areas are where the the Eighth Army is supposed to uh, arrive from, and uh, took their sweet time getting here as we will see. <clears throat> but, Mo but Montgomery uh, remained more than 60 miles away despite an annoying BBC broadcast that portrayed him as heroically galloping to the rescue. Only the lightly armoured 82nd Airborne Division in Sicily could provide quick reinforcement. And Clark this morning sent Ridgway a note so hastily scribbled that he omitted the final co consonant from the 82nd commander's name. Dear Matt, uh, dot, dot, dot. It's absolutely essential that one of your infantry regimental command uh, combat teams drops without uh, uh, today within our defended beachhead. <clears throat> At 7.30 p.m., as evening again enfolded the bridgehead, Clark conveyed a conference, uh, convened a conference with Dawley and Walker and Middleton in the hot, dim 6th Corps co uh, command post. To, uh, then there's just a bunch of... Uh, commentary about them doing it all in the dark so they don't get shot at and stuff like that. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so I'm just trying to look here. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, this is where it, it he doesn't specifically call it out, but they're discussing uh, an evacuation. And a demolition, uh, it says, demolition preparations alone with Shannon Morrell and Staff College, Staff College had also stressed the importance of amphibious, amphib amphibious invasions uh, of, dra of drafting uh, an evacuation plan. So, uh, yada, 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 uh, it's exceedingly difficult to do that, uh, in, uh, it says in the manual, and all that sort of stuff. Now, Clark would uh, subsequently go on. Uh, oh, that's right. And it says uh, that, you know, some force needs to stay behind to uh, be sacrificed to allow the rest of the forces to evacuate. And who would uh, who would do that at Salerno? Uh, Clark would subsequently deny seriously considering an evacuation. That, that was never in our thoughts, he wrote his mother a month later. In fact, he now revealed contingency plans, however, uh, still being cobbled together by Fifth Army staff. Uh, under Operation Sea Line, landing craft would shift uh, British 10th Corps troops to the 6th Corps sector at Paestum. Under Operation Sea Train, the reverse would, would occur, with American troops ferried to join the British near Salerno. Under Brass Rail, Clark, uh, Operation Brass Rail, Clark and his staff would, would leave the beachhead for a quarter, headquarters of float on the HMS Hillary. <coughs> Grunther was ordered to take up with the Navy the necessary arrangements. Uh, so, uh, as I mentioned earlier on in uh, some of the other videos, uh, Dawley uh, just seemed to really not being, uh, be at his best during this time, and he announced his intention to remain uh, sea train or sea line be damned. Uh, as the meeting adjourned, others grumbled in discontent and privately questioned Clark's fortitude. 
I don't want to tell you how to run your job, but give me support, Middleton uh, told the army commander. Spitting in annoyance, he added, I want to stay here and fight. The time had come, Middleton advised his subordinates to do some hard fighting. Right, so at 9 p.m., 2,500 yards uh, south of Kalor, a whistle blew for the 5th Army bivouac, summoning officers uh, in the bright moonlight in what the reporter uh, reporter said, uh, oh, never mind. And a colonel announced, German tanks have broken through the lines. They are coming down the cellé towards this camp. All office, officers will take a roll call and then with of their men. Three quick pistol shots would give the signal that the Panzers had arrived. Cooks and clerks and orderlies loaded their rifles and fanned out into firing lines, slapping at mosquitoes. Uh, then they were just doing their uh, uh, security calls out to each other. The waxing moon uh, cast a grotesque, unnerving shadows, and in a privet uh, hedge outside the camp, a soldier sung softly to himself, I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy, a Yankee Doodle Dandy do or die. Right. Uh, Vykov sends off a report to HQ, his HQ, German HQ, after offensive battle lasting four days, enemy resistance is collapsing. The 10th Army is pursuing the enemy on a wide front. Uh, the Battle of Salerno appears to be over. Well, not so fast, I guess. A Portal 1 is the next uh, subchapter. And from the rail of the USS Biscayne, where Kent Hewitt had planted his flag after sending ANCOM back to Africa, the distant pictures on Tuesday, uh, September 14th, still radiated an illusory uh, Mediterranean warmth. And it goes on with some very nice descriptive prose here. Hewitt bitterly opposed Clark's evacuation scheme, even as he made uh, ready to carry it out. He spent Tuesday morning uh, uh, on board, issuing orders and dictating messages. <clears throat> uh, it just says uh, that uh, then there's a continuation of the uh, request for firepower from the Navy and additional ships are being sent to uh, assist. Hastily summoning his top lieutenants for an afternoon conference, Hewitt unveiled the plans for sea lion, sea train, and brass rail in a crowded war room. To a man, they were horrified. If we withdraw, we will lose our whole landing force, warned Rear Admiral uh, Richard Connolly, who had landed Derby and his rangers at uh, Miari, which is up, uh, up here somewhere, up here. Oh, oh off screen, can't see. Do, 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 all the way up there where that pinky is. Uh, da, 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 da. So uh, it just cannot be done. Uh, ships get deeper when they're loaded and it will be impossible to get them off the beaches, Oliver said. Who is Oliver? We missed him. Oh, Com Commodore GN Oliver. Uh, if you uh, shorten the beachhead, the Germans will be within kissing distance and be able to shell us from both flanks. So you can see that everyone realizes that there's a real problem with this whole idea of an evacuation and everyone's in pretty much of a tight pickle. So uh, he said that everyone said, you know, the logic was unimpeachable, but Clark was in command at Salerno and preparations for the evacuation must proceed. Uh, uh, so, so just blah, blah, blah. Uh, yet the, the pack... Yet the pack of fighting sea dogs had failed to sense a turning tide. Just as the 5th Army's plight had deteriorated from precarious to critical on Black Monday, now it ebbed back to simply precarious. The plucky stand at the Burn Bridge had checked the Germans' momentum. Then, just before uh, midnight, a fleet of C-47s appeared overhead, and in come uh, the 82nd Airborne's 405th Infantry Regiment. They sifted into the beachhead on time, on target, and without a single instance of friendly fire, which is a nice change from uh, the landings at, at uh, Sicily. And uh, they had decimated the <coughs> uh, they had de that had decimated the regiment in Sicily two months earlier. Thirteen hundred lightly armored paratroopers uh, would hardly reverse Fifth Army's fortunes, but the boost to morale uh, was incalculable. Uh, from their slit trenches and, and fluvial thickets. Soldiers cheered them hoarsely as they watched the snowflakes des descend. Men, it's open season on the crowd heads, the, four, the 504th Commander roared. You know, roared, you know what to do. Uh, oh, I just got chills. Uh, it's, so, uh, it's so noble, uh, the desperation and the, the fighting here. Uh, it happens, of course, in all wars, but uh, that's pretty gripping stuff. Uh, very, very brave, uh, all, all round by everybody, not just uh, the 504th, of course. All right. Uh, <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, perhaps to uh, compensate for any faint-hearted behavior on Monday evening, Clark on Tuesday was conspicuously daring, demonstrating physical courage that in fact would characterize his generalship. Exposing himself to fire below the claw, he helped position his battered battalions to suture the scene between 6th and 10th Corps. A German lunch south of the Tabacafusio uh, at 8 a.m. was met with a hot volley of flanking fire that left seven panzers burning in the mist. Early in the afternoon, the 45th uh, Division troops threw back two more attacks. And by late in the day, two dozen, two dozen German tanks had been destroyed. In one case, an intelligence office told his diary, uh, we don't need to read that. That's nasty, nasty. Uh, south of the Sele, the uh, 36th Division shortened its line in uh, along uh, the La Cosa Creek, which I don't believe is going to be on the map here. It's not uh, detailed enough here at this scale. <clears throat> uh, let me just see if I can find... I think I found another reference point, though. Hang on. Uh, La Cosa Creek scattering mines and unspooling barbed wire from the Calore to Monte Soprano and halting the German drive through Alta Via. Here's Alta Via here. The Monte Soprano, we can't see quite yet, but um, I'm going to keep my finger here so I can reference. But uh, da, 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 da. right, uh, Weikoff uh, was loath to accept it. But uh, he had not driven the Allies back to their ships, yet frictions had accumulated in the 10th Army. A corps commander had been injured in a plane crash, and uh, the troops had suffered from heat exhaustion, and the Allied artillery was profligate. Uh, profligate, sorry. Uh, U.S. Uh, gunners alone fired 10,000 shells on Tuesday, and howitzers sniped at individual German soldiers. Berlin's refusal to release the two tank divisions from Mantua had also hurt the cause at Salerno. Those reinforcements that did arrive came in penny packets, a company here, a battalion there, and, and were committed to battle the same way without providing a critical mass anywhere. Attacking downhill brought certain pleasures, but also exposed the uh, attackers to uh, blistering fire. All right, uh, let's see. What naval uh, shells? What what naval shells missed? Air Force bombs hit. Several hundred bombers struck the Sally Plain during the daylight on Tuesday, and that night, in an unusual tactical role, 60 B-17s battered the road and rail targets around Eboli and Bata and Batipaglia. By late Wednesday, more than a thousand heavy sorties had been flown at Solano. That's amazing, right? So Batipaglia, so this this whole area here, right? Small fighter bombers grew pugnacious enough to strafe, strafe, strafe uh, lone German motorcyclists while flocks of Spitfires flew from Sicily every 15 minutes. And pilots on the tiny Piper L4 Grasshopper spotter planes, uh, known as the Maytag Mischer, known as Maytag Mischer Schmitz, uh, took occasional pot shots with their 45 caliber pistols. By dusk on Tuesday, German commanders reported that movement during the day had become almost impossible without attracting Allied artillery, naval shells, bombs, mortar rounds, or tank fire, and sometimes all five. Having seen such uh, firepower in Tunisia, and again in Sicily, Kesselring now doubted that the 10th Army could mass enough combat strength to obliterate the beachhead. Still, the stakes made it worth one more try, and smiling to Elbert on Tuesday, gave Weikoff Vi his marching orders, make a final push, the push the, throw the 5th Army into the sea, and be prepared to march north, perhaps as far as Rome. Right. <clears throat> uh, we won't go into... Uh, we won't go into much more of this here. The rest of it is uh, really Alexander, Winston uh, Churchill, Alexander and Clark all were sort of having at it, at it with each other. And Alexander uh, came uh, and visited the beach, uh, visited the beach and met with Clark and uh, basically said that we can't, oh no, we can't have anything like that as far as a... Uh, as far as a uh, evacuation, never do, never do, he said. Uh, all planning for sea train, sea line, and brass rail would cease immediately, lest panic infect the ranks. And Alexander looked about uh, if seek, uh, uh, as if seeking sand to build a castle. There will be no evacuation, he said. Now we'll proceed from here. And uh, so Clark took, took that all uh, graciously and kind of went from there. Uh, and by this time, where is Montgomery? Well, he's still 50 miles from Paston, uh, patching demolished bridges and building me and holding medal ceremonies. As you can see, once again, you know, uh, Atkinson's uh, distaste for Montgomery is revealed in his commentary here. All right, so uh, the, the Germans are going to uh, run this one more, uh, one more attack uh, on September 16th, and they strike again. 
Hardly had the shrieking hordes begun to lunge seaward, however, than the Allied cannonades struck them down. An attempt by the 26th Panzer Division to thunder down Highway 18 from Batty Pagla and join forces with Hermann Goering uh, in, Salerno, in Salerno, uh, that's uh, up here, uh, was uh, met with uh, thunderous uh, attacks and uh, they also had fuel uh, shortages as well. I need to mute my phone so I can finish this without this uh, distraction. Uh, the Allies, uh, the Allied weight of metal was now insuperable. Uh, Vatkov had shot his bolt. So, uh, let's see. Yeah, so basically when two regiments finally attacked at the mid-morning, they covered less than 200 yards before British tanks flayed them with severe casualties. A regiment of German paratrooper reinforcements had never penetrated the curtain of naval shells, and two Hermann Goring battalions were reported put out of action in close quarters fighting. So uh, so the battle, the, the battle, uh, the counterattack uh, peters out. And so that that really ends the sort of process of of the beachhead uh, disaster and this this line is really in the 16th they're really only sort of here let me just zoom out a little bit so they've got this very narrow uh holding area uh on the 16th and if i move this very carefully perhaps we can see let me just get this out of the way Sixteenth is here. We're supposed to have eleven VPs, uh, eleven VPs by the sixteenth, which is um, sorry, that's the twenty fourth. Sixteenth is here. Turn eight, eight VPs. So eight turns takes us through to the securing basically of the beachhead which also happens to be the end of the short scenario as well so anyway i thought i'd share that with you uh, hopefully you enjoyed that we'll, we'll do uh, many more of these readings as they become appropriate and i can find appropriate texts that aren't uh, uh, as dry as so uh, as, uh, as dry and uh, difficult to read and so i appreciate you checking in and we'll uh, move on to the next uh, next Set of stuff. All the best.